Thank you, Dan Danielle. Today, we know that the FDA will meet in just a matter of hours to determine whether or not it will issue an emergency order or an approval to allow for the Pfizer vaccine to be distributed to the public. If that happens, as we've seen it happen in Canada already and the United Kingdom, then those vaccines could be distributed in literally a matter of hours. Dr. Michael Corrin of Encore Research Group has been involved in two or uh, local trials, in fact, involving both of uh, not, not not just the Moderna drug, but also the Pfizer drug. He's joining us via Zoom this morning. Doctor, good morning. Thanks for being with us. Appreciate it. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. So, so doctor, we know based on what we heard after yesterday that uh, that some of the vaccines that were administered to healthcare pro provider, uh, you know, nurses basically in the United Kingdom had an immediate allergic reaction. We should say that they have a history of allergic reactions in general, and both of them carry EpiPens. Given that that happened after they received the vaccine, that they had the allergic reaction, are you concerned that the FDA may say, "Hey, we're not ready to pull the trigger"? on this vaccine yet? Uh, I reviewed the briefing document from the FDA <clears throat> and um, I didn't really see anything on it that I think the advisors will be concerned about. So that, that's, I think, really positive news. Um, I don't know all the details about the allergic reactions in the UK. I've heard about them as well as you have. And usually the devil is in the detail with these things. So we don't know exactly the nature of these patients and uh, in the clinical trials, the patients were not allowed to participate if they had a history of immune disorders. So it may be just a question of some guidance from the FDA in terms of how we select the right patients for the vaccine. And of course, all people should consult with their physicians before getting a vaccine, particularly if they have issues with immune disorders or other serious medical conditions. And so to follow up on that then, could you tell us how many people are involved in the trials that you are involved with? And then if I understand you correctly, none of them then had allergic, any kind of history of allergies? So we wouldn't know if they had an allergic reaction? No serious allergies. So people were screened out if they had serious allergic reactions to vaccines or to multiple medications or had some immune system disorders. So. All those folks were actually uh, not allowed to participate in the study. We had over 750 people participate in the Moderna and the Pfizer studies here in town. And fortunately, we saw a you know, very well-tolerated vaccine. People would get uh, low-grade fever, some headaches. So we had some folks that uh, had some muscle aches for a while. But by and large, people did extremely well. But again, we did screen for people who would be at the highest risk for having an immediate allergic reaction and those people weren't allowed to participate. So I think we'll get some guidance from the FDA that helps us understand which patients uh, can safely get involved in these studies and patients in whom the risk benefit trade-off is favorable. Doctor, it's interesting because every year when we're encouraging people to get the flu vaccine, I hear out in the public, I don't want to get a live vac virus you know, injected into my body. Is this a dead virus? Could you explain when it comes to this vaccine how this virus works inside the body? And are you, if someone agrees to do this, being injected with some kind of live virus? Sure, that's a great question. So both the Pfizer and the Moderna platforms are called messenger RNA platforms. These platforms do not involve injecting a live virus. In fact, this, these platforms are based on our new understanding of genetics and the fact that messenger RNA is the way our body sends messages to different parts of our, of our immune system. So what we're able to do with these uh, new vaccine platforms is not give the virus, but in fact, just give a set of instructions so our bodies know what to do. So following both the Moderna and the Pfizer vaccines, our body are instructed to make small quantities of the spike protein so that our immune system is aware of this potential invader. And once our immune system is, uh, is, is primed to recognize this particular protein, it will fight that protein when it sees it in the, in the, in the case uh, in the case of, uh, of an infection. So really the, the, the technology is really quite remarkable. Doctor, is this safe for children, this vaccine? The, the vaccine has uh, been tested in folks 12 and older, but there have not been a lot of data for folks between 12 and 16. 
So I believe that the FDA will state that the vaccine is not approved for uh, folks between 12 and, and 16. They may state that there is enough data for 16 to 18 year olds to be vaccinated. But that'll be one of the things that'll be very interesting for us to see how the FDA rules on that particular population. Dr. Michael Corrin of Encore Research Group joining us this morning. Thank you for your time. We really appreciate it. It's my pleasure. And to keep up the good work, our local media has done a tremendous job of informing the public. Thank you very much. Thank you. And we'll be right back.